I was a businessman from Michigan. Uh, I had retired after two, having two companies that I started. During that retirement in 2012, decided to go to California to attend Dr. Greer's CE5 retreat, uh, what he called a um, CE5 ambassador training. And I was skeptical. I was also an atheist uh, my entire adult life. Uh, but I uh, decided to attend, and on the fifth evening of a six-day event, I saw a ship appear uh, above our group. I was not the only one to see it. Um, and later that night, I, in the privacy of my hotel room, I decided to try this meditative practice that I had been learning with Greer, and that resulted in me having a face-to-face -face contact experience with an extraterrestrial named Tejbar. And that, of course, profoundly affected my life. And it made me more open-minded to the possibility that there is life after death, that uh, there's a part of us, some conscious part of us that survives death. And that took me on this eight-year journey that I've continued on uh, to discover things about that experience, uh, to try to understand it better, and to learn more about the nature of reality and consciousness itself. One of the many things that I began looking into was artifacts from an area of central Mexico called uh, Abuelos, uh, Abuelos de Jalisco. And Jalisco is a state in the middle of Mexico. And Abuelos de Jalisco is a very large city in Jalisco. And there's an area there called El Toro that the locals in that area believe is the ancestral home of the Aztec culture and the cultures before them. And this is called more, uh, is more notably known as Aztlan. And there's a actual Wikipedia page on Aztlan. It's spelled A-T-Z-L-A-N. And it is a mythical place that was the kind of birthplace of the ancient Mesoamerican cultures, uh, especially the Aztecs. So of this region, I discovered in 2014 that there have been for decades, even maybe centuries, these artifacts that have been dug up from the ground in the remote mountains of that area. And I began collecting them. I was fortunate enough to meet a friend who had um, shown me some of these artifacts. He lived in Sedona, Arizona. And I began collecting them. I became fascinated with them. And since 2014, I now have over 300 of these artifacts in my collection. And so I'm just gonna show you a few of them. This is one of the artifacts. Um, and I'm gonna quickly go through a few of these. They're really remarkable, especially the imagery that's depicted on them. This is called a Vimana. It's um, basically a flying saucer shaped uh, artifact made of stone. And on the back of it is what appears to be a winged angel with, the, uh, with a hood of a dog or a wolf. And these images are just fascinating. This is another artifact. This is a mosaic piece. It's just beautiful. Not only is it uh, well-crafted, but it's almost like puzzle pieces. I mean, if anybody knows about stonework and what it takes to, to create something like this, it's, it's no easy task. And this one has many inlays of different stones. Um, and the last one I'll show, well, the second to last or third to last actually is this one. These are all documented in a new book called Mexican paleo contact. Um, if anybody w wants to check this book out, there are literally thousands of photographs of different of artifacts from this area. Many have been carbon dated. And I actually have one here in my hand that has been carbon dated by two independent laboratories. The uh, carbon radiocarbon dating laboratory at Arizona State University in uh, Phoenix, Arizona has carbon dated this. But I just want to show you some of the details on this um, 
on this artifact on the edges are these incredible engravings uh, symbols or hieroglyphics on the back is a scene that uh, looks otherworldly it's quite fascinating because this is a stone artifact there's no way to carbon date it, but these inlays have a special epoxy or glue, and that does have carbon in it. So uh, we used a tool to scrape enough material that could be then sent to the lab for carbon dating. And the reports that I have are right here. This is the one from the University of Arizona. It's a three page report. And on the but the back page here, the final page, says that the age of this is 9,500 years old. Now that predates every known culture in the Mesoamerican culture, except for possibly the Paleo Indians who, you know, were hunter gatherers. They weren't known for any writing skills or, um, you know, they had pottery and that kind of thing. But the artifacts, um, you know, they're not known for. This is a second independent uh, laboratory in Miami, Florida, called Beta Analytic Radiocarbon Dating Laboratory. Again, go to the last page. It's a four page report. And on the last page, again, we have 9,240 years old in this report. So these are quite compelling um, reports to support that you know, there's something unknown to us. And what's so remarkable about all these artifacts that I have in my collection, and there are many other collectors, is that the, they depict extraterrestrials, what are clearly extraterrestrials, interacting with indigenous cultures, the Aztecs primarily. Most of my artifacts are clearly of Aztec origin, except for this one that I showed you that was carbon dated, that is a special one. This is one of my favorite artifacts in my collection from Abuelos de Jalisco. It depicts an extraterrestrial with a classic almond eyes holding a human head. And there's some beautiful etchings on the bottom and on the back. And it's just a beautiful piece in, <clears throat> in general, but uh, What's really interesting about this piece is that it includes this little insert that we can place here. And then if we put it on a level surface, it will sit still. But if we take out the little triangular piece, it won't stand up. Wow. To me, this is uh, a story about the extraterrestrials and maybe their connection to humans, that they are taking their own consciousness and downloading it to the creation of their own a human being. Yeah, I, I really like that piece. And to me, it's uh, telling us something. We are potentially the ETs. I, I know that's kind of a cliche among us, but I really have become a believer in my research over the years that uh, we are indeed their creation, and they take great pride and, and love us because we are, in effect, their children, and they are our ancestors. And in many indigenous cultures that believe they come from the stars, they do believe that their ancestors are from the stars. This is a very common belief with Lakota uh, in North America, down in indigenous cultures down in South America, and all over the world. It's really remarkable.